long straights uh, to the finish line. So it's not going to be a question of turning it into a track race over the last 400 metres, as it would be in most other marathons. It's a very, very short spell in the stadium. Position for as long as he can. And if anything, he's done psychological damage to the leader. He's moved alongside him now, and you can tell there the difference in the stride, the bouncy approach by Anton, and Fizz, for the first time now, realises, or may realise, that his defence of his title is in jeopardy, is in question. Because when the long-time leader can't shake off the follower, then the psychological advantage tips strongly in the favour of the other athlete. Anton saw it, obviously knows the course, done his homework, and has gone for home. Through the marble columns into this uh, marble stadium, built for the Olympic Games, the first celebration of the modern era, and he's got it right. He's got it totally right. There was nothing Fizz could do about it. He did everything possible. But Anton, his international teammate, on his way to becoming the 1997 world champion. Fizz, in second place, loses his title, but it goes to another Spaniard. Anton wins, Fizz is second, Spain first and second, and Anton follows into the record books, the Casella of Australia, Wakihuri of Kenya, Taniguchi of Japan, Patches of America, and Fizz the man who's finished second today. Straight the Commonwealth champion, after many, many years of trying, many years of competing at this level, He's been fourth in the World Championships in 87, 11th in the World Championships in 91, eighth in the World Championships in 95, and now I'm absolutely thrilled to see the very popular Steve Monaghetti come through here to take a bronze medal at the world level. Just shows you that if you continue applying yourself and you continue coming back to this level, well, great to see Australia win another medal, and I'm not surprised to see Steve celebrating like that. He's run an awful lot faster.